And now we'll talk about orbits. If we have the Earth here, we say that the Moon is in orbit around the Earth. So, And this is not drawn to scale. The Moon, we see it up here in the sky, and it's moving around the Earth in roughly a circular path. It's really an ellipse. That's mathematically something like an oval. But it's not stretched out very far. It's pretty close to being a circle. And it's moving around the Earth, so at this point it's moving in this direction. And at that moment. In, in, at any point in its path, its motion is right along the path. So right here, it's moving this way. And when it's right here, it's moving this way and so on and it just goes around and around and around and it takes about a month to get completely around now the question comes up why doesn't it fall down so what keeps it up there and the other question comes up if it's moving in this direction why doesn't it just drift on away why doesn't it just float away so what keeps the moon in its orbit and Newton figured out why an object stays in orbit and he did this by doing what we call a thought experiment. Newton couldn't actually put something in orbit. He couldn't actually perform an actual experiment to see if orbits worked or not. They didn't have rockets back then. He did not have the technology or the means to do this. But he could think about it. He said, if we did this, what would happen? And if we did that, what would happen? And he simply thought it through. And this was his thought experiment. You can reproduce it on your page here. Imagine a hilltop. We'll draw it like this, and imagine a cannon up on the hilltop. So we'll draw a little cannon here, something like this, ready to fire. And you're going to shoot a cannonball out of the cannon. So the cannonball leaves the cannon, and it moves, as we've said, in a path that's a parabola. So as it moves to the right, gravity pulls it down. Well, now let's imagine the same thing. But let's imagine firing our cannonball... a little bit faster. So I'm going to draw the cannon up here again. And we fire the cannonball and this time it has a larger initial velocity. Well it's still going to move in a parabola but the parabola will be stretched out. Now we've said that the fact that it's moving horizontally faster than in the first case isn't going to affect the time that it takes to fall. It's still going to fall down a certain amount to the ground in the same time. The horizontal motion makes it cover more horizontal distance during that time, but it doesn't stay in the air any longer because it's moving horizontally. And that's because the horizontal and the vertical motion have no effect on each other. And that is the case if the ground is flat. If we assume the fall down here to this point is the same vertical drop as the fall for the one moving more slowly. Now Newton realized that the Earth was round. The Earth is not flat. And we typically ignore the curvature of the Earth for small distances. If you fire a cannonball it might go a few hundred feet or a few hundred yards or even if it goes a few miles. It's not covering enough distance horizontally for there to be an appreciable amount of curvature of the Earth's surface over that distance. Newton, though, in his thought experiment, he said, what if we fired a cannonball really, really fast? So let's imagine the cannonball is fired so fast that it covers so much horizontal distance that the curvature of the Earth is no longer can no longer be neglected realistically. Let's suppose this cannonball is shot at such a high speed that it goes so far that it covers an appreciable amount of curvature of the Earth, an appreciable amount of the Earth's surface, such that we have to take the curvature into, into account. You can see then that if it's moving so far that we're taking the curvature into account, that the distance it would fall from here isn't as far as down to here. Because the Earth's, the Earth's surface bends down in our diagram, the cannonball actually has farther downward to fall. It doesn't simply stay on this level. 
it ends up falling down farther because of the because as it moves to the right the earth's surface is essentially curving downward out from under it so it has farther to fall if it has farther to fall it will take longer to fall so in this case they don't hit the ground at the same time because it's moving so fast to the right the the surface the the curvature of the earth's surface can no longer be neglected now newton went on to think this imagine the earth and you can draw this over here fairly large and here's our hilltop up here and our little cannon up on the hilltop of course this isn't drawn to scale here's the cannon and imagine this is shot at just the right speed such so that it moves to the right and starts to fall down but as it falls for every foot that it falls the the surface of the earth basically curves away from it exactly one foot so it's falling downward but it's also moving horizontally at such a high speed that it never gets any closer to the earth and this cannonball would come right back around and BAM hit the person in the back of the head there now in reality this would never happen with a cannonball because the air resistance would slow the object down and it would very quickly fall to the earth's surface but if you could go somewhere where there weren't any air resistance it would continue to move around in a circular path around the earth like this indefinitely and you can do that if you can get above the atmosphere the atmosphere is really this thin layer around the earth and it's thinner than most people realize if you were to compare the thickness of the atmosphere to the thickness of the earth you would find that it is thinner than the peel of an apple is compared to the thickness of an apple so compared to the size of the earth it's about it's about four thousand miles from the center of the earth to the edge and the atmosphere is just maybe 50 or 100 miles depending on where you define the edge of the atmosphere it really fades out gradually but it's really only 50 or 100 miles compared to 4,000 miles of thickness of the earth so the atmosphere is really this very thin layer so if this picture right here were to scale this mountain would be huge hundreds of miles high and this cannonball would be up above the atmosphere and there's basically no air resistance so it moves without slowing down earth earth's gravity is still pulling it down so instead of continuing in a straight line it falls away from that line but for every foot that it falls the surface of the earth curves away a foot because it's covering so much distance horizontally so it stays the same height above the earth it's in orbit at that point so an object in orbit is essentially a projectile it's in free flight under the influence of only gravity and we're not even considering air resistance it's in free fall just orbiting around the earth it's falling toward the earth but never getting any closer